Welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Today we have another fan view and it's Paul Featherson. I hope I pronounced your second name right, Paul. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Obviously a Bohemians fan, we can see by the jersey, so definitely not a Rovers fan anyway. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Sligo now, I meant. Uh, <laughs> right, so Paul, uh, what attracted you to Bohemians? Um, well, Bowls were just in the family, to be honest with you. Um, my dad was kind of be into the going to big league of Ireland matches in Dublin. So mainly Bowles and Chelsea bring me to them type of games when I was younger. But my uncles and cousins are also Bowles fans. Well, along with all my friends. So that's what got me involved. And how long have you supported Bohemians now at this stage? Um, well, like the first match I went to was 1997. So I was only 10. We went with my dad to watch Finn Harps. I don't remember much of the game, but I do remember it was absolutely freezing. And we still have the program has a little bit of memorabilia there. But um been going to Daily Mount consistently now for the last twenty years. Um since two thousand we've been gone non stop, week in, week out. Yeah, no, that's great. You're obviously a season ticket holder, are you? Yeah, well just this this year was my fourth year becoming a member. So um <laughs> yeah. didn't turn out great with the crown of virus, but um I'm sure we'll we'll be I back at some stage. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So obviously your first game was Finn Harps. What's your, um, I suppose, give us a few memories, your favourite memories supporting Bohemians, I suppose. Um, favourite memories, like, it's a 4 nil win against Rovers, I suppose, with spring to mind. Um, what else have we got there? Oh, there's What's plenty, that? like What's there's the shellboard. Yeah. Was there another oh, Bohemians game where they four one down or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that well, it wasn't that, it wasn't that it wasn't that the game itself now, but um, yeah, that's obviously one that all Bowls fans love to love to talk about, you know. Um, what score was in the end? Six four. Was six, it? six six four. Yeah, four yeah. one up. Unreal. Four one up. Six four to Bowls. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Shel- the Shelbourne game in two thousand and two. Bobby Ryan scoring the last minute winner. Um, which cleansed the title for us at the time. So that was that was huge. Like that would have been my first like, real memory of balls. I remember being in the river, so I'd stand um as the ball was coming down the wing, I think it was Gary O'Neill had the ball on the wing. Um the closer he got to the box, the further down the stand that was moving. But the time the ball hit the net it was nearly on the pitch, but it was that was some experience. That would have been um, the first time you've seen them win the title as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, well no. 2000. Like, oh no, sorry, where are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 2003. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, so the year, the one before that would have been me forced, obviously, because it was that forced in X amount of years. I don't know how many, I don't know how many years it was since yeah. they won it before, but yeah. They did a good, they did a purple patch there, didn't they? And um, obviously, after that, just before Keith Long came in, things were pretty bad, weren't they? Yeah, they, they, they weren't looking good at all, to be honest. Obviously, everyone knows that. Bowls were more or less out of business and it was touch and go for probably a couple of hours whether they would be still around or still in the league and to where we are now it's the lads the lads that are involved running the club they deserve a like, serious amount of credit because Bowles they're in a good position at the moment you know I think a lot of people don't understand the context when they look at Keith Long sometimes and they say like I have him personally he's one of the best managers in the league a lot of people say but yeah. what trophies has he won but you have to look at the context. Where were Bowles before he came in? Bowles no, were, as say, they were on their knees. They were nearly relegated as well. And uh, that might have finished them. I don't know. Um, you'd know more yourself probably. But uh, the key long has come in. And obviously the people at the club, you know, everyone deserves credit. But yeah. on the beach, long has definitely uh, improved things in Bohemian. Slowly but surely. And he's an example of a manager that, if given time, you know, some of these young managers can do a job. Like, you know, because... Uh, you know, he might have been out of a job, you know, yeah. three or four seasons or two or three seasons at any other club. But Definitely. Like, ship, he's improved things. He's good at working with players. Trevor Crawley in there with him now, who everybody says, I've talked to players as well. He's a fantastic coach. Seemed to not work as well as a manager, but as a coach, yeah. apparently he's getting serious credit there as well. 
Yeah, so that, that that was highlighted to be about Trevor. Like people said he wasn't a good manager or such, but if you talk to players or fans around the league, everybody knows his coaching is, is second to none. Um, Keith himself, like the job he's done there, he's an unbelievable job um, and deserves every bit of credit that he gets. I personally think not because I'm a Bowles fan, I think he is one of the best managers in the league. Um, the work he's done, the players he's brought in, the way he's developed them, he's brought lads back from England that it wasn't working for them and potentially going to give up football or whatever it may be. And now he has like lads just playing out their skins, I suppose, you know, and it's yeah, good to see. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's that he's a good knack for bringing in players across seas that he can tell how good they are, or if it's a case of it's the coaching together that makes these players yeah. better. It's very hard to tell. He brought back Talbot, and you know you wouldn't have put him down as you know when they signed him, you wouldn't have said that's a great signing because you didn't know yeah. him. Let's really, say Mandrew has been obviously electric as well, and there's other players. Connor Levinson's another one as well, and yeah. they've all they've all they've really shone in that Bohemians team. I think it was Shane Supple retired, and I think a lot of Bowls fans are saying, "What are we going to do now?" Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think Shane, like I don't know whether he might have known Talbot, or there was there was there was word of that he kind of helped get him in as his replacement. So um, it was a good replacement. But like, along with that, like Keith Long, he doesn't just bring in players for the sake of it. You know, they have to fit what he believes in. And whereas like other clubs might just see a player who was performing well on the pitch. And they're going through signing them. I think Keith is a little bit more. He, he wants the lads to buy into what Bowls are about. Um, as everyone knows, and probably sick of hearing people saying they're a community based club and they get involved with their fans and they, you know, that kind of thing. So um, if you're not buying into that, you're probably no good to, to Bohemians. Yeah, because vital in this league, three or four signings could bring you into the top three, or if they go yeah. wrong, you could, you could be in the bottom three. It's just it's so close, I think, this league at this minute in time that. I'm looking at a lot of fans of clubs and saying there's no way they're finishing bottom or second bottom, but yeah. someone's finishing bottom or second bottom, you know. I have to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's even the weakest team. I couldn't even tell you now what team is the weakest in the league. I think it's very tight. I think it's very hard to call. I don't yeah. think there's much between an awful lot of clubs. I do think there's a bit of a gap at the moment though with Rovers and the Dock, if I'm completely honest. But yeah. after that, Bowes Derry, and after that, it's Nearly much of an emotionless one or two signings difference can make you fifth or yeah. tenth, you know, that kind of way. But, uh, yeah, I don't disagree with you either. Like, you have Dundalk and them up there, and like, they there's money involved, there's a lot more money with them two right. clubs than there is throughout the league. But the next bracket is more than it's more than just Bowles and Derry, in my opinion. I think if that you have yeah. Pats as well, if who else does those. Well, I suppose we'll offer them to start off great, but there's, there's, there's the more than just two stuff, clubs, yeah. like you know, like it's yeah. It's, it is what it is. I suppose it's a small league, so um, there's small measures. Or if you make a mistake, you don't win two or three games. You're, you're down there. But if you win two or three in the bounce, you're, you're looking positive, I suppose, you know, because it's that small. It's that high. The fact that we've only now 13 games going back, it just yeah. makes it all very... I don't, it's now become a sprint rather than a marathon. It's just Absolutely. So, it's, it's, so, like how, it's so uncertain. If you win, if you start off your three or four games well or poorly... It's going to make a serious difference because it's not really a league league, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, for example, if there was 18 games last season, last season Rovers would have walked the league. In the end, yeah. Dundalk beat them comfortably. So it shows, you know, 38 games, it's just a lot can happen. But in 18 games, with 13 going back, you know, you could have a big team near the bottom of the league. You just don't know. It's, it's yeah, really absolutely. Depends, just depends. It just depends what way... Uh, teams start, what what way teams adapt to playing without fans. Now we know like there's not tens of thousands of League of Ireland games, but the fans do make a difference. They're close to the pitch. It's um, you, the players, I'm sure the players hear everything, you know, that kind of way. So um yeah, it's gonna be strange for them going back, but it is gonna be it's it's, it's an absolute sprint. So whoever gets a couple of wins on the bounce there, they're looking good. So Good stuff, right? We'll get into this now. Um, one to eleven. I'm looking forward to this because I had a few friends around that era who were Bowls fans, and uh, I started supporting Pats because they were Bowls fans. Really? Believe it or not, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, had, I had this th- I had this thing where I kind of wanted my own team, you know, that kind of way. So that's yeah. why probably I didn't go with Bowls, but uh, I started <laughs> following Pats. But uh, that was good rivalry, and both teams had actually very good teams around '97 to 2003 ish. But yeah. Um, yeah, looking forward to this. We'll start off with the manager anyway. Who'd you go for? Yeah, so we, we went with Keith Long, which is probably obvious. And I think a lot, of, as you said, he hasn't won a lot with Bowles, but it's the job that he's done 
Um, he stabilised the club. Um, not only that, we're getting results as well. So look at last season and well, I know it's early days this season. We're still up there as well and we'd we, we, we be hoping to get Europe again. Um, so yeah, it's, it's key long for me. It's just the work he's done and he's stayed consistent and he's stayed around and he's never really moaned about the, his, his circumstances, lack of money. He's just got on with the job and he's done some job to be fair. Yeah, it's very hard as well for him to build a team, probably harder than whoever the dock manager is, obviously Perth yeah. and Bradley at Rovers because they have a more, when I say more professional setup, they're more professional by name, but they've more money basically, the yeah. Bohemians have. So from year to year, Long is probably going to lose more good players than say a Bradley or Vinnie Perth is. So he's having to deal with that as well, which is very impressive. The other impressive thing is they are kind of a part-time club, and I say kind of part-time. They obviously <laughs> name part yeah, I know, but they look they look professional, don't they? They feel professional, yeah. um, and I think obviously that's down to the club, but it's down to him as well. And uh, we said earlier about the coaching team, Seth and Crawley, obviously work well together. They were both players in St. Pat's as well back in the day as well. But um, yeah, definitely Keith Long's. Hard to argue with that, isn't it? Um, yeah. What formation are you going with? We just went with the, the straightforward four four two. You know, um, Camaro was difficult enough. I've, I've chopped and changed. I've wrote down teams, and I've, you know, there's there's, there's honourable mentions in there for players who didn't make the team. But um, oh, it, it was difficult to pick. To be fair, I thought it would be much easier when I got the message on Facebook. Um, I was saying to myself, "Yeah, bowls eleven, not a bother. We'll bounce that out uh, handy enough." You know. It wasn't the case, to be fair. <laughs> but it gets, it gets you thinking. It really gets you thinking. Doesn't it, it does, yeah. And look it at does. it and you go, geez, I'm leaving this fella out. And, you know, but uh, we'd love a goalkeeper. Goalkeeper. Um, we went from one we spoke about earlier on, Shane Supple. Um, mm. Could have been Brian Murphy. Brian Murphy was unbelievable. But he went, like, and this is probably controversial with other Bowles fans, but Supple was just, I felt when he came in, um, a lot of seniority about him. He... <laughs> He was a leader as well, which a leader as, along with an unbelievable shot stopper, great key, great all round keeper, made Ireland squads and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, supple for me. Disappointed yeah, the same goal. Yeah, definitely. He's experienced, obviously, in the double panel as well. And I don't know if working yeah. with likes of Stephen Clucks, and I know it's a different sport, but uh, goalkeepers still, you know, they're, they're similar in both sports. And I wonder if working with him helped him out as well. Uh, and yeah. he's never going to get a uh, Get into the Dublin team. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> so uh, at least he could, uh, you know, make a career out of soccer as well. And uh, yeah, you're right. With the leadership is the first thing I would think of him. Um, obviously, good shot stopper, but definitely, I was a great leader. Definitely. So on to right back. Um, right back, we went with uh, Derek Pender, and again, look, it just comes to leadership and and ownership, I suppose. But Derek Pender as a he's a typical captain, isn't he? He was. He wears his heart in the sleeve every game. Again, another person sad to see go, but obviously football career is coming to an end. Um, the goods of eight years with Bowles. And yeah, I don't, don't think there's anyone else to, to slot in there. Yeah, I think with Derry Pender as well, he, he was one of those players that kind of uh, almost forced himself to improve as a player. Like he wouldn't yeah. have had, say, the technical ability that a lot of other players would have, but the, the hard, he was proof that hard work gets you far. He's one yeah. of those footballers. He was at another, another. Was that Pats before that? I think they got him for Pats. Yeah. He didn't play an awful lot of Pats. He was raw and young, you know. But over the years, he's got better and literally has got better as he got older. I think there was another year in him, personally. But yeah, I, I do myself watching them. Like, yeah. Watching them there last season. There was definitely another season left him. It'd be the 90 minute, 94th, 90, 95th minute. He'd be still up the overlap on down the right wing or whatever, you know. Yeah. He was a great player, to be fair. Uh, Even if you, if you stayed about to rotate with the likes of maybe Andy Lyons or something like that. Yeah. Lyons, he's got great potential, I think. But um, he's still learning the game, isn't he? Where Pender might have been a good man. Yeah. He's still at of Pender, so that's, I suppose, great for Bowles. Uh, no better man to take over. I think it's under 17s, is it? 17s, I think he's with yeah. now, yeah. Uh, no better man, I think, to be a mentor to the likes of those young fellas coming through. And I'm sure his coaching ability is good as well. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a manager Bohemians one day, if I'm honest. Yeah, that. well, that's, if, he, if he wants to go down that road, I wouldn't be surprised myself. Um, but obviously, he's starting his coaching now, so yeah, possibly. So, on to left back. <clears throat> um, left back was, I went with Connor Powell. Yeah. Um, myself, so that era of when we were really good. And I just always remember, like when I was younger, actually, I used to play against him myself, and he always kind of stood out at Belleville. Um, 
But five years with balls, he won it all with us as well. And there was always talk. So you have a look, the likes of Sean Gannon, where people talk about him every year. He should, probably should have went to England. That similar talk was about Conor Powell. And then he kind of just went off the radar a little bit. You know, with the Rovers, he went to Sweden, I think, was it? Or something like that. Yeah, he went abroad. I think the funny thing is with some players, they kind of click at a club and then they start yeah. moving. Obviously, they have to move for reasons, like financial reasons, a big thing in Ireland where players have um, have to move. And a lot of players get criticised for moving to other clubs, but <laughs> to be honest, they've no choice a lot of the time. Let's be honest about it. It's their careers as well. And um, it just has to be done sometimes, unfortunately, doesn't it? Yeah, but, um, it, does, it doesn't Powell, do either. Honor Powell was definitely a good choice there. Any honourable mentions of left back or... Is that one of the decisions for you? Uh, it, was, it was tough. Like, like, mm. You have Leahy, but he wasn't there for long enough. Like, he was he was unbelievable for balls, but he wasn't there long enough, really. Um, then, like, there's, there's other left-backs going back through the years, but no, I think Conor Powell was just the one for me. He stuck in my head from... It was that era of when I was supporting balls, like, or when, I was, when we were winning things, um, exactly. I suppose. So that was it. Right, so first centre-back. Um, four centre back. I don't really. Ken O'Man, we went with. He he was around the around the balls. I think two spells, eight seasons there or thereabouts. Um, we always remember his goal against Shells in two thousand and three. Absolute cracker. But um, I remember him as a young player coming into the squad, in the play for balls, and he was just quality from the get go. He he just had that about him. He just knew he was a good baller, and then again, he was there for all that league wins and cup wins and stuff like that so that's why I've, I've went with Ken on one it's very good at set pieces as well uh, yeah services, wasn't uh, absolutely I mean with the odd goal again another leader and it's one of the things I always notice when I'm doing these fan uh, views with every club you know is that there's a lot of le- like a lot of these players are just leaders as well like you know if you yeah. win things you usually have a team of leaders like you don't have one or two so um, that's huge as well and it's always something I look at a team Nearly first thing I look at a team, if they want to be successful, have they got any leaders? How many leaders have they got? If something goes wrong, who's going to get the game or the scruff of the deck? It's a huge thing. It's not just about ability, you know, and you can't just have ability and, and win yeah. things. Look at Dundalk at the moment and how they keep coming back and winning things. It, you have to have that drive and determination in the squad as well, like not just ability. I think yeah. it's amazing how they do that. But um, that was one thing about a lot of those players, and Ken O'Man's definitely one of them. So we'll move on to your next centre back. Yeah, so we went with Owen Harry as okay. my centre back. Oh, so he's Owen, centre back. Yeah, Owen, Owen's, Owen's, like, he's done a bit there, to be fair, and we couldn't leave, we couldn't have the back four without him, no matter where, no matter where I was putting them. So I suppose uh, he's mainly right back at Shelburne. Mainly, I suppose, the, he, he, he was. He, his whole career, I think he was mainly a right back, but yeah, he's yeah. he's definitely done stints with balls as a centre half, and we wouldn't have back forward without him. I was looking at Jason McGuinness and stuff like that. That could have possibly made the the team, but I wouldn't put uh, him ahead of Owen Harry, you know. So Owen's won yeah. it with balls as well, League of Ireland legend as well, you know. So he's he's won it kind of everywhere, and again it comes back to being a leader. So it's a solid back four, in my opinion. <laughs> Would have that up against any any attacking line. I would have, um, if younger players are watching, I'd have Owen Harry slightly above Sean Gannon personally as well as um, the best right back I've seen in the last 30 years or so or whatever it is. Um, I think he just had that extra, I don't know what it is, maybe defensively a little bit better, a little bit stronger physically yeah. maybe, but he had everything else that Gannon had as well, for example, has even. But um, yeah, Owen Harry, I think he's one of those that uh, no matter who you support, generally people have the height of respect for Owen Harry. Absolutely, yeah. As you say, fantastic leader again. So we'll move on to midfield, I suppose. Centre midfield, anyway. Centre midfield, really. So, um, wasn't really with balls for a long time, Paul Keegan, mm. before his, his move across to, to Doncaster. But he was, part of that, he was part of that era again of the 2008, 2009. And I, I, remember, as, I remember watching that particular balls team and he stood out like a sore thumb, you know. He was just uh, physical, Ball winner, he could play the ball, he could pretty much do it all, and that's that's why he went abroad. He went across the water, so um, yeah, so like, there's a lot of midfielders you could have probably put in there. Like, for overall footballer for me, it would be Paul Keegan, right? So, your second midfielder, 
is <laughs> a bit of an obvious one here. Kevin Hunt. So I don't think I'd have anybody else. <laughs> you might, you might, you might have heard from before, but I thought, uh, I thought you were going to name him first, actually. So no, it's it, 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 it building up a little bit yeah. of suspense, you know. <laughs> but uh, no, Kevin Hunt, uh, absolute legend, and from the first like the earliest memory of when Bowles won the league, and it was thousand or thousand, sorry. Um, Kevin Hunt was always like. That little blonde lad in the middle of the park is unbelievable. And then as I got, as I got a little bit older and watched him play, um, he was absolutely quality. Just quality. Ten years service to Bowles as well. So not, not many people do that. Um, I was looking through the list of players that I have here. Um, and there's a, there's a couple of eight years, but they're, they're split kind of in two different stints and stuff like that. But Kevin Hunt was there for ten years and he's won the league and cups. And again, look at, look at all, the, all the players in my team, they're all winners. They've all won something with Bowles and there's, there's probably a reason why they've stuck in my head, you know? Yeah, no, fantastic player. Possibly the greatest Englishman to have played in the league. I know people say Bobby Charlton played in the league, but to be yeah. honest, three, four games doesn't count. <laughs> like, you have to actually achieve something and produce something for me in the league. I remember doing a team before um, and someone said, why did you pick Gordon Banks? <laughs> so he played one game. Why <laughs> 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 would have picked Gordon Banks? Um, but, uh, you know, Hunt was brilliant. He was very good on the ball. Uh, seemed to have a lot of time um, most great midfielders always have time. I don't know what it is, but they seem yeah. to have time when they've no time. It's just unreal. And um, probably my favourite Bowles player um, of that era, I would say. Um, actually, there might be another one, but you might get to him later. <laughs> is there any more honourable mentions in midfield? If, well, like there, there's, there's, a, there's a low that come to mind. Yeah. But I don't, like, you have like, Gary Deegan. Like, he, again, wasn't yeah. there long enough when he was there. Hard as nails, you know. He's a great player and. Um, like Boko, Boko was around, around what eight, eight years probably around the balls. So I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but he he's there. Come back, he, did he? he left and went to Bray. Yeah, another yeah, season of Bray went full time. Like, <laughs> uh, where it didn't work out, what happens? But he's a balls man through and through. You know, there's no, there's no doubt on that. Um, I suppose the list of it, the list is endless of, of good midfielders in there. But there the two I went with. I'll get, I'll get people talking. I'm sure like, there's other tales. Well, probably another one. Kevin Hunt is going to be in everybody's team, I would imagine. So, ah, that's pretty much mine. Hundred percent. So, left midfield. Left midfield. Um, went with Killian Brennan. Again, this this might be controversial. He was unbelievable player. Uh, four balls. Again, during that era of the. How many years was he at balls, if you recall? Uh, two stints. I wrote it down. <laughs> he was four. He was four years. He was four years. Four, four seasons at balls. Yeah. Yeah. But um, obviously, like players, players move throughout the league all the time. So, ro- go to Rovers. You know, they go to Shells. A lot of these players in my team here have went he actually, from. He actually, funnily enough, struggled at Shamrock Rovers, and I, I never yeah. know why. Because he went, he came to Pats again, and then he was brilliant again. Yeah. Well, I don't know what happened to Shamrock Rovers. He just, I don't know. He just seemed to struggle there. But it's it's hard to believe how or why or I don't know. You don't know what way they were set up. I can't remember. You know that far, yeah. that far back. But, yeah, he was a wonderful footballer. He had a wonderful left foot. Absolutely. Um, and every, everything seemed easy to him. He looked like a player that didn't make an effort, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was effortless to him. Effortless, yeah, exactly. He just yeah. Uh, set, pieces, set pieces were quality. He, he looked. Sometimes you might think he's looking casual on the ball, but he could, he yeah. could do stuff that other players in the park couldn't do, you know. Um, no, I think, I think he deserves that spot there, to be fair. Yeah, it's hard, hard to argue with that. Any other honourable mentions there? Yeah, didn't really look too much into it to be honest he was the fourth that came to mind and I just left it at that so Paul we had a bit of a collapse there so we'll get on to right mid <laughs> yeah so um, right mid we went for um, Bobby Ryan again just because he was he was with balls for two seasons he scored that crucial goal against Shelbourne that clinched us the title more or less um, you can't be a last minute winner you know and when he when it's so significant, then it means something. That's why he's always kind of stuck in my head, Bobby Ryan. He was a smashing player when he was with Bowles. Um, yeah, he was just absolute quality. Tricky. Yeah, small, yeah, exactly. Small, tricky balance. He actually lives out in my neck of the woods. I think he's from Limerick, but he lives out in yeah. uh, Ashburn. I'm um, pretty sure he does anyway, because I see him every few weeks, so he must do. Um, but yeah, Limerick man as well. Uh, played with Shelburne as well. I think he yeah. played with Limerick at some point as well. But as you say, tricky winger. 
um, balance small, but um, one of those that's very hard to mark, isn't he? So yeah, did you have any other? No, go on, yeah. No, he, he was someone that like always stuck in my mind as being. He was always direct and. Mm. Probably one of the four swingers at Bowes that we can remember that was always direct and always having a go at players. Um, yeah, I didn't really look too much into into me right mid either. To be honest, I was he was he cemented that place down for me because that goal obviously meant a lot, you know. Um, strikers, strikers, they they picked themselves to be honest. Um, Jason Bourne and Glenn Crow. You could, I was just going to say, you couldn't have picked a formation with one man up front. No, I, I wouldn't have been able to. Like, <laughs> to be honest, I, I nearly started from the from the top back towards the goalkeeper. The, the, the two lads, it was, it was an easy easy selection. Two goal machines. Um, they scored goals for fun. I just remember the power of Glenn Crow. He was just brilliant. He was just raw. There's very few strikers like him around in the league at the moment. Um, or even over the past couple of years. I suppose you... like. Twig, hate to say it, but he was a goal scorer, you know, and they're, they're a dying breed as such because Glenn Crow was like, if the game was yeah, Glenn Crow, I would put him as a League of Ireland Didier Drogba type, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He was very, very strong. He scored a goal at Daily Mount, and I, don't, I can't remember the year, but it was against St. Patrick's Athletic, and I don't know how he done it. He scored for the halfway line, but it wasn't like do you remember Conan Burns' goal actually against yeah. Bohemians for the half? It wasn't like that though. It wasn't like he looked up. He kind of swiveled and he hit it on a half volley and it just went into the top corner and everyone looked around. The Pats fans were even doing that. Like, I don't know if you remember that goal, but, oh, I, 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 I don't remember actually... year, but, but they were the type of goals he kind of scored as well. It was like just goals out of nowhere. The power, not just the power of him physically, but the power in his strikes was yeah. That's it. Is, he just had pure power. Is, 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 yeah. is um physicality and his actual actual shooting was just it was just power. His heading of the ball was power. Mm. He never scored I don't think he scored tap ins. Even if he was outside the just in, inside the six yard box he was smashing them home. But Dude, um goal keeps even getting out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> no he was absolutely quality and, and yeah, he was he was from Blanche as well so kinda of made us like him a little bit more. That's where I'm from myself. So um then you have Jason Bourne again he's he's, he's a League of Ireland legend similar to Owen Harry like he's been around He's been abroad, so he's just um, yeah, quality. Easy, easy selection up top, to be honest. I think Burn was unlucky when he went abroad to Cardiff. Um, he yeah. got a back injury, and I think I think he could have done well. I really do think he could have done well over there. Um, but I don't think the injury helped him. I think Glenn Crow also had the capability of playing yeah. abroad. I don't know why. Um, maybe I don't know fitness levels. Maybe need yeah. to be a little bit higher for that. I don't know. It's hard to tell, isn't it? But it, it is. He was a smash. Like, he was, he was a smashing player like, and he was getting the goals that even now to this day like, people weren't getting the goals that he was scoring um, consistently that was the big thing and again though he was the type of striker though Glenn Crow that he didn't necessarily have to score to have a good game yeah. so he wasn't a fox in the box not that he couldn't score them goals he could but he could influence the game without having to score a goal and personally I'm a big fan of those type of forwards because he can't score in every game but yeah. if you can influence the game at the same time work with your midfield and um, maybe do a lot of donkey work as well for your partner maybe yeah. that's another thing uh, Glenn Crow sometimes had to do as well at times but um, both goal machines arguably the two best if you were to pick your best 11 in the League of Ireland the last 30 years, I'd probably have them two up front as well. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be hard to argue with that, like, because yeah. because of the goals they've scored. Obviously, I've mentioned <laughs> Twig already, but like, he'd be in there with with that type of player, but these two were a different level. They were a level above, Twig, you know. Twig, 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 or Twig, <laughs> Twig was, I suppose Twig wasn't in the league as long as them two, so yeah. they beat him over longevity, consistency in those terms. As best yeah. he'd be up there, all right, but it's hard to argue with the consistency, the level of performance. Cl- uh, Crow, Crow, sorry, won everything. He won stuff at Shelburne as well, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, Jason Byrne scored a lot of goals at Bray as well, and obviously won stuff at Shelburne as well. Um, so I don't think you can argue with them. Would you throw in an honourable mention anyway, or would you have one, anyone that would. Uh... <laughs> For a striker? Yeah. I know oh, he come close Dini, to them, but probably Danny Cork. Danny, yeah, he's, he's yeah. been around the club now a couple of years, and well, a second spell he's he's, he's been back. So, um, no, Danny, like Danny, Danny's a he, he wears his heart in the sleeve. He gives one hundred and ten percent, but 
he's just it, he's just not at the level of those boys. Um, unfortunately for Bowles, but he does get goals. Um, you can't, can't argue with that. He has improved though, hasn't he? He's literally again another player that maybe was going around for a few years. Yeah. Doing an awful lot, but he's improved as he's got older. I do think that Kurt Bowles squad at the moment he is important to them. Um, if they can get him fit and he plays up front because they've a lot of very young players and I think he's taken up the leadership mantle very, very well actually when yeah. he's been able to play. Um I do think he was a loss when he got injured as well because Yeah, definitely. Not too sure about the other strikers personally. Uh, Glenn McCauley's very young, so mm. you just don't know it can take time with a with a Glenn McCauley because Corkham was young before and was going around as well, and it's difficult to tell. Andre Wright has his moments, but I don't think he offers what Danny Corcoran offers. To be honest with you, no, 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 definitely not. Um, hopefully Glenn McCauley will, will come good for us, but we'll I suppose time will tell with that. But why, why did it not work at Pat's? You know, I'd like to know. He was, he's held, held in high regard, so he we'll, missed, see, we'll um, see what happens. Glenn, though, he missed a lot of, um, he done a lot of good work, but he missed a lot of what you would call easy chances, seems yeah. to lack composure. However, he gets into good positions, so if you can somehow find that in his game, suddenly then a striker can go like that. And yeah. You've seen strikers have been at three or four different clubs and nothing's happened for them, and suddenly it just clicks. And uh, I think age comes into that as well. There's something in him, though. There's definitely something in Glenn McCauley, whether yeah. it can... And if it doesn't happen for a Bowles, I'd be worried because we talked earlier about the coaching team at Bowles, how to get the best out of young players. And if they can't get a tune out of him, I'd be worried about him then. Yeah, no, no I, I do agree with that as well. Um, he's at the best place probably for his career at the moment. Like, he, could, he could kick off from him. He could start banging in a couple of goals and then that'll be it, as you said. Um, one or two goals, bring the confidence up and he could be flying. But even with Andre Wright as well, he, he's he's got a few goals for us. He, he puts a shift in, and he, he's a good player to have there. To be fair, um, yeah, I've, I've no arguments with our our strike strike <laughs> absence. No, we can't. We can't. Yeah, that's uh, to be honest with you, that's a great team. Um, I'd love people to get down in the comments if they've any different opinions yeah. or whatever. <laughs> um, I'm sure people have an opinion, but to be honest, there's not much you could really argue with. There's obviously one or two positions people have different, but overall. Yeah. Can't really add that team. It's a great team and great having you on, Paul. Appreciate it. Yeah, cheers, Keith. Good talking to you, mate.